So after a nice long weekend, we're back in the workshop, started cleaning down this L67 engine so we can uh, get that ready for the VN. But a present is just arriving right now for this bad boy. And uh, obviously we did it some mischief the other day. <sighs> we pretty much cut the sump in two, nearly cut the block in two when we destroyed this thing on the dyno. But uh, there is a green top coming for it right now, just about to back into the driveway. The guys at ACM Parts are delivering us a barra green top so we can put some serious boost into it. So obviously we have to modify a new sump because we've damaged that one. But, uh, but yeah, having the green top in this will allow us to make, well, well over 600 horsepower at the tires, that's for sure. So might want to watch your back there, man, because uh, car's coming in. Oh, wow, there's two barras there. Two barras. Keep coming. That'll do ya. Awesome. So it looks like we've got a green top here. Now, I believe, because ACM takes a good history of all their stuff, the cars come in, they make notes of what the odometer is, all that sort of stuff, the condition of the engines generally. So I believe there's like 143,000 Ks on the clock on this one. This one's a bit of a surprise. I didn't know this was coming, but this is a territory motor. So we get a territory sump. So we'll be able to wrap this one for parts so we can modify it to get it in there. But there we go, green top there, territory engine there. So ACM parts have delivered us these and that is awesome. And you can get parts delivered to your door from ACM pretty much anywhere in Australia. So good way to do it. Anyway, I think we'll have to unload these bad boys and get them ready for a little Mazda. I think they're reasonably clear. All right, I'll drop that down in the center. Ah, you poor old girl. Never knew how good you had it. Now it's up for some punishment, but that's all right. We're not gonna lean on it too hard. We'll give it 20. 20 would be fine. 25 is fine for him. Well, there we have it. One green top to go in the car, one territory engine to wrap for parts. Best of both worlds. We'll get it going again real soon. So, we had a bit of an oopsie with our engine. And if you haven't seen that episode, you should go watch it because it's uh, pretty epic. But uh, there is certainly some carnage in the bottom end of this thing and um, it's really hard to see in the car. So we're gonna pull this engine out of the car so you guys can have a good look at what's going on. And we can sort of diagnose, I suspect a rod let go in a big way. And it's pretty much tried to saw the engine in two. It will come out in one piece, but uh, yeah how much longer it lasts in one piece after that i don't know because uh, i got a feeling the cylinder head is holding it all together so anyway we'll rip this thing out of here and give you guys a look at uh what tried to crawl out of the engine because uh it it is pretty gruesome anyway let's get to work where's my shifter So while we've got this thing in the air, let's have a brief look at uh, what's going on. I mean, seriously, it looks like something has tried to claw its way out of the engine. The sump's stuffed, so we're gonna have to make a new sump, which kind of sucks, but uh, wow. 
That's seriously created some damage. I don't know how much coolant is in this, if any, but I suspect either way we'll still get a little bit damp. Fucking Jesus! That much. Just when you think it's all gone. Nah, I feel like I've just started in a Pornhub video. I'm all wet and sticky. Don't search for that, kids. Lower this down a bit. I think that's as far down as we can go. Scotty's tip of the day is the temptation is always to do the easiest bolt first on any manifold whether it be exhaust or inlet or whatever everyone goes for the easiest bolt first that's wrong always leave the easiest bolt to last that way when you crack all the other ones you can unwind them by hand because there's no load on them but that last bolt it's always going to have a bit of load on it because the manifold will come loose so you take you do the easiest bolt last so you can get at it while you're trying to support it. Means removing it is so much simpler. All right, this dipstick's going to be a little bit of a problem at the moment. There we go. Dipstick's out. And manifold is out. Good old straps. So we'll jack it up just a fraction, take the load off the bolts, pop the bolts, and it should just all come out. In theory. So as you can see, we've done ourselves a mischief. Nearly cut the block in two, certainly snapped number five conrod. And you could almost play doctor through here. There's only this one piece of metal just stopping you from going all the way. But yeah, the sump's definitely in two pieces. The windage tray almost made it. And uh, the block, man, it's, it's hold on both sides. I mean, there's the other side. That's cracked there. 
down there, like if we hit that with a hammer, that'd just come straight out. You can see where it, it's actually cracked all the way across to there too. So the only thing holding this together right now is the sump, I think. Um, we might even rip off this back part of the sump and have a look up in there. But uh, yeah, it's good to see flex plate held in real well. I mean, it's had some serious power through it. I mean, we're making what? At some outs on the hub, it was 560 horsepower at the tyres. That's pretty serious. It's not bad for a standard flex plate. But yeah, definitely, <laughs> it has seen better days. Uh, yeah, she's a bit old, a bit sad. You can see there's a piece of, uh, well, that's our gudgeon pin there. So that means, yep, yeah, I can see a chunk of piston sort of sideways in the bore. So um, yeah, that's not great. It's a shame too, because this was our customized sump. And it worked so well, you know, like it really did. It was working really well. And now we have to do it all over again. Oh, well, I guess we can learn from the mistakes we made with making this one. But uh, yeah, it worked so well. But anyway, all right, let's undo some of this and uh, have a look up inside. Oh, the boys, thankfully, gave us back all our bits. So that's, uh, it is a piece of pen rail. So that probably fits, you know, kind of in there somewhere. Probably right about there, I reckon. There's a bit of sump, some piston ring, oil ring. We could glue it back together, make it all better. Yeah, no, that ain't happening. two pieces oh check it out wow we broke it good oh wow so it's not just so it's not the piston that's sideways it's actually the top part of the conrod is sitting up in the bore. Dr. Scotty in the house going to extract the con rod. So I'll roll this over. You can still hear that it's got some compression. So it's only the one cylinder that's dead. We could run it on five. Not really, but there. Yeah. Wow. She really has hurt that rod. There we go. Here we have it. How dare you? You've ruined my dreams. Now, oh, yep, there's a piston up there. Yeah, maybe. Not really. So, not much of a piston now. Essence of a piston. Wow, that is essence of a piston indeed. Check it out. Smashed it good and proper. So there's not much in the way, there's no real glazing on the side of the piston from when, uh, you know, rings expand and, and grab on the bores. We're not seeing that. I don't see any evidence of it. Uh, I think, yeah, I think rods let go and then smashed the shit out of everything. But yeah, gives you an idea of the crown thickness. There's not particularly a lot there, but, you know, it's taken a battering. It's done all right. Not bad for a natural aspirated engine. Remember, this is a what we call an NA motor, so natural aspirated. It never came with a turbo, never designed for a turbo. So we've had, 
you know, up to 18 pounds of boost. I remember we saw 19 pounds of boost in this during the tuning of the territory. So, you know, that was very much on the limit. We turned it down then, we turned it down to 18, raced it, had a good time. Then it sat outside for ages, got rain in it, all sorts of stuff. And then, you know, we pulled the motor, stuck it in the Mazda, cranked it up to, you know, 17 pounds. No problems at all. Made some good power. The only thing that's non-standard in this is valve springs. It has valve springs. That's it. No rod bolts, no head bolts, no fancy gaskets. You can see there's no comedic gasket there. That is just your standard factory gasket in there. I mean, yeah, we've put a sump on it so we can fit, on, fit it in the... Uh, the Mazda, but this is, or was, a stock NA motor. And I think we've kind of found the limit. Some people reckon you can make more power if you put a bigger turbo on them, so it doesn't come in as hard on the bottom end of the, uh, the power curve, because this comes on boost very hard. So, and that's what breaks rods. So if we put a bigger turbo on it, like a 4088 or something like that, or a GT42, something like that would bring in the boost, it would take longer to come up and boost, so it wouldn't be bringing in the power so severely at the bottom end of the power band. Some say that is the way to make much more power with one of these. But at the end of the day, why with an NA motor? You're always going to be dealing with a hand grenade with the pin just edged out. So you might as well just go for the green top. You know you can put 25 pounds of boost in a green top. We've done it over and over. It's not a problem. So. 20 to 22 is safe as houses in a green top. So we do that in the Mazda. Man, that's going to be making 600 horsepower at the tyres. No problems at all. I mean, this one was making 518 at the tyres when it popped. Well, the run before it popped. So I have no problems. I have no doubts that we will see 600 horsepower plus with the green top in there. And you're going to see all that very soon on carnage.